Hey guys, it's Mary Cozy, and for today's video, it's a little bit different. As you can see, I'm in front of the camera, and for those who are new here or who frequently watch my channel, I usually make silent vlogs and my life as a student. So for those who are new here, I am currently a med student, and I am also a licensed medical technologist in the Philippines, and I also am a certified medical laboratory scientist in the US. If you see me looking down here, like here, it just means I'm looking at my guide since my laptop is here. So disclaimer, I will not be diving deep down into the process of applying to the exams. I also tried my best to condense everything in one video, especially the questions submitted to me through Instagram and through our comments section. So if you have further questions, feel free to just comment and I'll try to answer them or you can also message me on my Instagram account. But before we start, I will be dividing our video into six portions. So first will be the generalities. So my tips and or experiences for the ASCP IMMTLE can be combined in this section. So the bulk of my tips will be found in the general section. So it may appear later on on the MTLE and ASCPI part. It's kind of shorter. I will be putting everything, mostly everything, in the general area. So second, we have the MTLE. Third will be the ACPI. Fourth will be the references. And fifth will be scheduling. The sixth part will be the mnemonics, wherein you can just pause and screenshot the mnemonics that I will be posting there. For my flashcards, I used Anki. There are other virtual flashcards such as Quizlet, but I opted for Anki instead. I didn't really make a handwritten flashcard since I do get conscious of my handwriting and papa ulit ulit ko lang yun pagka may mali akong isang letter or pangit lang sulat ko. So I just opted for a virtual note card. Anki is not for everyone, but I suggest to try it when you have time. So this is pretty common and I'm sure some of you do this as well. Basically, I wrote down so, so much information on small papers or on manila papers. I stick it on the wall and read it in the morning before studying. Well, this is before my Anki cards. So what do I stick on the wall? So I place values such as fasting blood glucose levels, like kung ano yung normal value and yung abnormal value. I know it's basic, but these things are that you need to know, especially if you need to eliminate the choices. I also placed mnemonics and I will also include a couple of mnemonics that I used by the end of the video. Finally, I also write my weakest points. I used to place information about the different hematology factors, the special characteristics of bacteria like yung mga itsura niya sa plate, or its unique scent, yung mga ganun. Pero pro tip, if possible, have a draft on what you want to put on the wall para hindi siya messy and also para may, co may virtual copy ka rin. Like, I used to type it on Microsoft Word. Next, for the flowcharts. I didn't really do a lot, but I mostly did this for microbio or bacteriology or yung bakte. Diba ang daming tests that we need to follow? Like yung mga PYR, mga tests sa IMVIC, yung mga ganun. And I tried to make a flowchart out of it. I made my own kasi gusto ko rin mag-add ng other details. Doing this was very useful since I knew where to look and since I was the one who made it, mas kabisado ko siya. Finally, of course, hold on to your support system. There will be times when you're reviewing, you will feel so, so hopeless, you will feel so stressed, and sila yung mapupuntahan mo during um, pagka yung mga times na yun. Like, like, for me, I would go to them and be like, guys, I'm so stressed, di ko na alam yung gagawin ko, di ko na alam kung ano yung pagkaralan ko. So, if having them in your life, that will be so helpful. So, the constants would be your friends, your family, and of course, your God or your religion. So next would be the hobbies. I would like to remind yourself that everything is not studying. So I know, I know, it sounds kind of cliche. It sounds kind of cliche. It will be better if you have a de-stressor. So some people like playing games. That's your de-stressor, then go. If you like to crochet like me, um, just crochet right on ahead. Always have break times. That's very, very important to have break times when you study. So just make sure that you balance everything properly. 
initially had the luxury to study MTLE for a while. I looked through different review classes available in my area. For the population in my university, there are usually three to four common review classes that they usually pick. So um, one of which is mine, which is Lamar, and other places that you can see on the map. So picking a review class is important and there are a couple of key aspects that I noted down for you guys. So first will be the schedule. So this is the most important factor for me. I gave this a huge prime since um, this will help me in scheduling my study reviews. So just take into note that some have morning till the afternoon or some will start at the afternoon and then until night. So just make sure that you review their, what they offer rather. So you review what they offer and try to speculate on how you should be um, balancing everything through their schedules. Next would be the price. So I won't expound on this since this is kind of self-explanatory, but review classes can range from 10k to 15k. Pesos, okay? Pesos. So that's like so far from what I've seen. So try to just canvas and I hope there are things more cheaper and of course high yield. So next will be the professors. I'm actually not sure if you can see the professor list beforehand, but for me, I based the professors from the word of mouth. Like my upperclassman would say that, oh, this review center has this professor and it's kind of cool since some of them are actually from my university. I know how they review, so parang, oh, I like this professor, so it would be more applicable for me if I go to that review center. Or like, if you go to a different review center na wala din yung professor mo, so parang more things to, more information, more study styles. Hopefully, there will be a word of mouth rotating around saying that this center has a, ni has a nice set of professors and all that. So next would be review materials. Usually the review materials are already part of the fee that you pay and some classes offer a huge bulk of review materials like for mine and the more. Ang dami talaga. Legit. But in others, they try to condense everything into small booklets. So that can also be a pro. So every um, review class have their own pros and cons. So just look into that. Next will be the sample exams. So if you don't have the budget to enroll to a review school because okay, it's really really pricey, try to look for sample exams online or usually may mga second hand na nagbebenta. Like I saw from Shopee, I also saw from Facebook Marketplace and also in Facebook groups. So try to just widen your range kung saan kayo maghahanap. So if you know someone, pwede rin manghiram from your friends and relatives or yung mga upperclassmen niyo and having a hand-me-down reviewer or at least um, sample exams will actually help you so that you can also gauge the questions that may come out. Because honestly, when I was taking the board exam locally, um, there were questions that repeated per se. Parang, um, I guess it's not really exact, but then they were paraphrased. And the the choices were different, but then I saw the right answer. It was like, this is so familiar. So at least you have practice and you know how to study for it because you can gauge what type of questions will come out. Some people say as well that some, what do you call this, questions from the board exam also come from the books. So if you have those resources, try to answer yung uh, question back and try to rationalize it as well. So for the ACPI, I actually didn't take a review class. Personally, I was thinking that time my education from the MTLE licensure exam was really enough. Though you can also search online for those learning hubs that also offer ACPI review classes. So, medyo madami naman sila, so you can just look into it. Some people also parang sell at their second-hand reviewers. And personally, it was kind of the same as studying for MTLE. So while I was studying for the local board exam, I used my MTLE review as for my ASCPI as well. Though I mostly focused also in the clinical correlates because very heavily case-based then si, ano natin, si ASCPI. to use the review materials provided by my review hub but I did use some reference materials like besides the one from my review classes. Although until lang yung pang cross-check ko na information, I used Strassinger for clinical microscopy cross-checking and Turgeon for clinical hematology. For other sample questions and double checking, I used Shula. I think another book, I think a green book, I really can't recall the name. While for ACPI, I mostly used Polanski and LabCE. 
So LabCE is actually such a convenient site and they offer paid membership and it gives me a feel of how the exam will look like. While for Polanski, it's actually a good reviewer. It has all of the subjects in it, most of the subjects I guess, and it's kind of like, it kind of looks like a flashcard but I only have the virtual version that time. I'm just not sure where you can get it but Polanski was really helpful for me. So essentially, the ASCP I kind of has a different feel when it comes to their questions. They give questions like cases talaga. So okay, it's like they give a situation, they give the salient points. Most of the time, they show the hematocrit count, the urinary result, those, those clinical correlates talaga. And so from there, you already have to infer the pathogen or the illness of the patient. So you really need to know the clinical values, like which is the abnormal value, the normal value. And also, I think you would also need to know how to calculate like MCV, MCHC, those kinds of calculation. But personally, when I was taking the exam, I just forgot that. But I really tried to memorize them a few days before. I was just ng kaba that time. Also, to take note that in their questions, if you answer, so let's say in number one, okay? In number one, if you answer that correctly, number two question will be harder. If you answered incorrectly, so mali yung sagot mo, number two would be an easier question. But I think ang alam ko if the, if the question is harder, it will yield to more points. Mas madaming points siya. So pagka easier question ata, mas mababa yung points na mahupuha. Though from my experience, you will have enough time to evaluate your answers. So just take your time. May timer naman na may kita dun to um, keep track of your progress. And also, I remember in my ASCPI exam, they gave out earbuds. Pwede mo siya suotin during the exam. Though, during that time naman, hindi naman maingay sa loob ng classroom. More of maingay lang sa labas. Kasi may construction in where I was taking the exam. Like, yung labas ng building may construction. And they will also give you a board. Unerasable siya. So, parang laminated siya in a way with, like, grids. Tapos, they give you a pen for it on, um, to write on the board. That will be your scratch paper. So, doon mo lalagay yung formulas mo. And for me, I place my formulas. And also, the mnemonics that I can remember that can be applied during that time. A frequent question that I get is also if you can bring a calculator. From my experience, you can. But make sure that you tell the person on the desk na you're taking the MLS ASCP exam. Because in that office, madami exam yun. It's not only the MLS ASCPI. So may mga ibang exam kasi dun na bawal mag-calculator. So just tell yours and ang alam ko pwede mag-calculator from what I can recall. I mostly used Excel for scheduling. Then I slowly shifted to Notion when I was reviewing for my board exam in the course of med school. Since that time, my national board exam was moved on a later date and I was already a med student. And that time, I was already using Notion. So here you can see is just a brief look of my Excel to give you an idea how I did mine. for watching and thank you for reaching the end of the video of my fir very first video with kind of like an on-camera setup and me talking to you guys so I just want to say that keep on trying and don't forget to take breaks and also soon 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 you will achieve your goals that's it for now bye